Okay, so that's the opening riff to I Want You Back by the Jackson 5, their first number one single right at the beginning of 1970. Fantastic bit of music. The bass player, Wilton Felder, was also a fantastic saxophonist. Look him up on YouTube and Google and all of that. You'll find that his CV is pretty impressive. Now, at the beginning there, I played the riff in two different places. Now, this is to illustrate that really it doesn't matter what you do as long as it feels right and is easy for you to play. Lots of people say, oh, no, it's the wrong string. You've got to play this fret and that fret. Forget all that. It's about the notes. Now, the choice between a choice of strings and where you play the riff really depends on the sort of tone you want. As you could hear when I played it here, it was quite sort of sharp and middly, whereas here it's more sort of bassy and a little bit duller. Maybe that's what you want. The strings on this bass I haven't changed for 12 years. They are uh, tape wound strings, so they sound pretty muddy anyway. Love it. Now, I'm going to go through that riff and the tabs I'm going to put at the end as well for all the bits and pieces. The tabs are completely, you know, you can interchange, you can change between strings, but I'm just going to put the notes up for you. Now, this is also a really good exercise for bass players to stretch between frets one and four, one through four, one, two, three, and four. So if we were to look at the beginning, we've got this four with the last finger on the uh, E string, then two and three, and usually I would hammer the, the three. You could play them separately. It's a good exercise in itself. So four, two, hammer three, next string one and three, and then four on the previous string, on the A string. So we've got A flat, B, C, E flat, F, D flat. Then the next bit, one, three, four, and then the only open string, the D string, and one, two, three, then three there, four and four, one on the A string, one on the D string, last finger, E string. This might seem like a right old stretch, but actually it really helps you get all of your fingers working and to stretch them and to get a really good posture with your left hand round the neck. And then the first time it's played, there is nothing between the sort of first riff and the second riff, but in other places, there's that, or which is where I would play it because I like the tone better there. And the rhythm wise, it's that not. But the thing is, it doesn't really matter if you want to change the rhythm. If you listen to all of the, the times that this riff is played in the song and the other bits, the those bits, they're different every time because it's musicality mixed with the technical prowess of Mr. Felder. Now, if you are practicing, I've got a garage band file. I just put a, a little bit of guitar on so that you could hear uh, those uh, hear the riff in context. It actually works for the next riff as well. So if I just uh, press play here, wait two bars. One, two, one, two, three, four. So it works for that one as well. Now this is an A flat major scale. Pretty much if you complete it with that lower note, but the riff actually doesn't play the whole scale, but it's a really good way of practicing your major scale. Sixth fret D string for your A flat, fifth fret D string for G, third fret D string for F. Then the next string up, which is the A string, You've got an E flat at sixth fret, a D flat at fourth, a C at third. Then on the E string, you've got a B flat at sixth fret. So six, five, three, six, four, three, six. Then it goes to sixth fret for E flat. Then F, third fret to D string. Then a C, third fret A string. D flat, fourth fret A string. A flat, fourth fret, E string, B flat, 
sixth fret E string, E flat, sixth fret A string, A flat, fourth fret E string. And then with the. Now, the nature of a string instrument is, means you can play that A flat in four different places. E flat, you can play it there. So really the choice of where you put these notes is kind of up to you. And if you find a way that fits your playing better, then that's fine. Of course, there's a bit of wandering about there. So you've got to be try trying to get sort of efficient with that. Now, with the same backing track, I'm just going to take the guitar away because that's an audio file and will be, of course, affected by the tempo. If I just... Uh, bring the tempo down to maybe 70, just leaving the hi-hats and the bass drum. just gives you the opportunity to really delineate where those notes come rhythmically. Now, we've got the third and final part of this. This is the bit at the end where people go, oh no, <laughs> because it is actually really tricky for the bass player. If I just speed it back up to 100, which is the tempo I had, uh, with the guitar part reinstated, um, it goes like this. One, two, one, two, three. And you're back into the last chorus as it fades out. So, hmm, we've got this. So it goes. Notice that it is all in the same position. Then we've got, now I'll just describe that in terms of frets actually. So we've got three and six on the D string, three on the A string. Four on the A string, three on the D string, and then across to four on the E string. Then we've got something that is actually musically very useful bits of kit to have. We've got this. What you're actually playing are four chords there. You've got the chord of F minor in individual notes. F, A, flat and C. Then we've got C minor, C, E flat and G, D flat major, D flat, F and A flat, A flat major, which is A flat, C and E flat. So you've got two different shapes. You've got the minor shape, which starts on the index finger, index last and annular across two strings. So the same thing happens for C minor. Then the major pattern is middle, index and last across two strings. This means that any chord that you see on a piece of music, you can play in this way, C, G, D minor, A minor, just re reproduce that pattern wherever you need on the bass. So once again, it's the guitar riff that the, the uh, for the the central central section sort of doesn't quite go with the that bit. But it's useful just to have that little bit that ding 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 ding. ding, ding, ding. You can program that up on up on GarageBand, but you really do need sixteenths on your hi hat. If you've got, uh, for example, on if you are on Garage, I'm on an iOS GarageBand here. What I've got is I've got the drums separated, so I've got my bass drum and snare drum programmed, and then I've got another track with the percussion uh, where I've set the hi-hat complexity to four. Uh, if you're on iOS GarageBand, that's relevant to you in terms of being able to practice the, uh, the main riff. So it just means that you've got those 16s nice and sort of tight there.
and then you're thinking of the beats within those sixteenths because actually there's lots of rhythmic pushes here and it's important to get those when you're working through this. So there it is, there's Wilton Felder's fantastic bass playing on that tune I Want You Back. That riff is just inspired, it's fantastic and I hope you get a lot out of it.